The old adage, follow the money. The next thing you can pay attention to is what's happening across the country. The first things first is you really have to drive. What drives people through a recession is a strong foundational company. That means you have great people, you have great systems, and you're financially strong. Being strong to see the awareness of the signs, know where you're gonna go, how you can pivot to it, having those strong relationships and, and people is, is critical. And then learning the key terms and things that you can watch so you can start to anticipate what other business sector do I wanna get into? Looking at those key factors of what's coming up in the next two or three years so that you have a strong opportunity in those opportunistic zones is gonna be critical. Those are the types of decisions, the lack of a decision, the indecision decision that I'm talking about that actually lead the most to the issues that we see oftentimes. Someone just doesn't wanna make a choice, so they move it to next week, they move it to Monday, they move it to next month. I'm just gonna let one more month go by, one more month go by. Look, your gut has a feeling, that whole gut feeling thought process that you hear and you talk about and you know what I mean. When your gut gives you a feeling, especially if you've been in this business long enough, like most of you have, you have to trust it. And if your gut's telling you something's wrong, it's usually the time to act. Welcome everybody to the next episode of the Construction MFers Podcast. I am Scott Pieper, CEO and founder of Mobilization Funding, and today we are gonna talk about how to recession-proof your construction business. You can't avoid the recession, you certainly can't stop it, but you can survive it, and sometimes, if you're properly prepared, you can even thrive in it, because there's lots of opportunities. Today we're gonna to talk about that. All right, let's jump right into it. So, how do you know when a recession's coming? What things should you be looking at? So what if you get the information and they tell you interest rates are going up? They tell you interest rates are down. They tell you bond markets are this, stock markets are that. Maybe you have all the facts, but you don't even know what to do with that. Have you ever figured out what the trigger points are to why is there a lot of residential development? Why is there a lot of multifamily development? Why is government, municipality, city, state, federal government work being done? Why is there more horizontal work versus vertical work? All of those types of questions have trigger points to them. They have things that happened six months, a year, two years, three years prior, cycles that are leading to those ultimate outcomes. How do you anticipate what they're gonna be based on the factors that are coming in so that you can actually recession-proof your business? And what are the things that you can do to succeed in that? That's what we're gonna cover. So what are some of the early signs of a recession? Well, I can tell you that it's certainly not all the talking heads on your favorite media channels, okay? Because they don't know shit. They misinterpret, they over-exaggerate, and what they're doing is trying to guide us down a path. But there are a lot of avenues out there where you can start to pick up the general theme of things. You can start to pick up where they're coming from. Start correlating, are there multiple media stations all saying the same thing? especially when they have different opposing views typically, that's a good indicator. What is the Fed doing with interest rates? What's going on in the stock market? What does Wall Street think? The old adage, follow the money. Well, it means a lot in this, in this instance too. Where is Wall Street investing their dollars? Are they putting their dollars into government programs like the infrastructure work for telecom? Interesting, that's probably gonna be an indicator. Are they putting their money into housing, public housing, or other areas. That's interesting. Another thing to look at, what are the banks doing? Are they making loans right now? Are they lending dollars out? What types of projects are they lending them out to? What makes them nervous? What makes them comfortable? Those things all change. They're very influential depending on what's going on in the macroeconomic environment. That's what you have to look at. The next thing you can pay attention to is what's happening across the country? Is the general theme of the entire country pretty similar? If that's the case, you're probably seeing some good things happening. If the general theme across the entire country is starting to be a little different, maybe it's bifurcated. Maybe in the Southeast you see certain trends, different trends in the Northeast, the West, Middle America. Are certain states thriving and others aren't? What's the leading indicators of that? Why is that happening? I'll give you an example. Since COVID, there are certain states that are doing tremendously well. 
They're not feeling the impacts of the same inflationary dollars, supply chain issues, or other. Well, why is that? Well, if you have a certain state that has a massive amount of people migrating into it every day, you're naturally gonna have new people, new growth from, from actual new humans moving into the state that are gonna lead to projects and they can start filling the gaps. If you had existing customer base or existing population that didn't do anything, as those factors, those macroeconomic factors start to lean on that population, certain things are gonna be impacted by that. Well, that's still happening now, but if you have a big influx of people moving into that state, they're gonna to start to overcome maybe some of those pressures. That's why you see states, certain states, Texas, Florida, and others doing really well in an environment where other states like California or New York or places where people are leaving, for example, hurting more. So you're having those same macroeconomic factors leaning on those states while they're having a population decrease that actually has an even more negative impact. So seeing the cyclical challenges across the, the states, but also state by state, can be a great indicator for where you might want to work. For example, maybe if you, move your, your, if you were to move your whole construction organization to a state that's thriving from a state that's not, that's one way to help recession-proof your business. If that's not an option for you, maybe you expand it from one type of market segment to another. For example, do you have a service type business to go along with your construction type business for big projects? Do you have an industrial, uh, are you working in the industrial sector or are you working in just the new home building sector? There's a lot of avenues there. Do you have government contracts that you're working on as opposed to just private contracts? So you can start to diversify the types of projects you're on. You don't have to diversify the scope of work you do, just the type of projects you're doing. So those are some of the factors to pay attention to that can be leading indicators to where and if and when a recession is going to be had and how it will impact the specific area you're in and, of course, ultimately your business. Now, moving on to things, what can you do if you're in a spot where you're not going to be able to move geographically? Maybe some of the options I just mentioned aren't for you. What can you do to protect your business? Well, the first things first is you really have to drive. What drives people through a recession is a strong foundational company. That means you have great people, you have great systems, and you're financially strong. Now, what does that look like? That means building your balance sheet, being prepared, saving cash, keeping your money in there, minimizing expenses, not spending a lot of dollars on big capital expenditures. Maybe those, that's the time to put, thing, put those things off really digging into your numbers. Extrapolate out the type of projects that are working for you and the ones that are not working for you. It's not a time to take a new risk on a new customer or a new project that you might have done before when you can do the same type of projects with similar customers that you can have a more, not guaranteed outcome, but you can anticipate a more consistent outcome. Those are the kinds of things you wanna look at. Inside your business, you really wanna take a hard look at costs. Through a growth phase like we've had the last many a number of years and many of you have been a beneficiary of, you wanna to start to look at maybe some of those additional costs that you bolted on. Maybe it's an extra person or two. Maybe it's a, a service, a vendor. Maybe it's different things that you can do. I don't want you to like think you're gonna do all the work and get rid of it just to minimize costs, but you wanna find some of the inefficiencies. Are there positions that just aren't needed any longer? Are there positions that you needed for certain phases of the company or certain anticipated phases that just aren't going to be there? Those are the kind of things you want to look at. Minimizing your overhead so that you can have costs as much allocated to revenue generation or revenue that is coming in as possible is what's going to give you a good strong foundation. And then conserving your cash, building those relationships with your people, your lawyers, your accountants, your um, your lenders, you want to make sure that those relationships are strong and you have a great foundation because when you need them, you don't want to be meeting them for the first time. So those are the kinds of things that you can be doing as a recession is starting if you haven't already, but they're also the things you should be doing all along. You should be able to, this is the time now where you, all that investment in that relationship over the, the good times are going to be able to prove fruitful for you the most in that time of need, 
as you're going to be in a situation that's more likely to be hurtful than it is to be helpful from a big picture standpoint. And you want to make sure that although the situation might be hurtful, you're actually still surviving, but you're also still thriving in that environment because you've positioned yourself well, you've built relationships to know that you're that are there to last, people know they can trust you, they can count on you, and you're going to be the one that's going to get a lot of the work. I have a real estate friend who tells me he loves these times because in the growth times, too many people enter his market. It means there's too much competition, they drive price down. And in these situations, a lot of them get out of the business. And when we come out of the cycle of the recession, he's still standing there with him and his company strong, and they're able to grow and thrive in a really good way. And they have a great two, three year run that they're able to have and capture. So just different perspective. Nothing lasts forever, good times or bad times, recessions or other, nothing lasts forever. And so being strong to see the awareness of the signs, know where you're going to go, how you can pivot to it, having those strong relationships and, and people is, is critical. And then learning the key terms and things that you can watch so you can start to anticipate, what other business sector do I want to get into? Looking at those key factors of what's coming up in the next two or three years so that you have a strong opportunity in those opportunistic zones is going to be critical. They might be different industries, uh, like they might be working with customers that are in the industrial sector versus the government. It might be the government versus private. And sometimes it might be geographical. That's what's going to help you survive through the recession. These kinds of things are the way you're thinking about it. All right, so we've talked about the being resilient. Now, there's part of resilience is making sure you have the right cash flow tactics to not only manage the things we always talk about that are in and out of your businesses, but managing cash flow inside of a recession or leading to a problematic time period is even more critical. Having tools available to you like a critical cash flow tracker. We created one of those for a customer at one point because we were running into a problem. Now, we didn't have a recession, but inside this customer's business with their projects and our loan, there was issues. And the only way to tackle that issue was to build some kind of tracking tool that we could manage the cash together, not just for a project, but for the entire business. We built that for them, we implemented it together, we managed to it on a twice per week basis, and six, eight, 10 weeks later, the business started to turn and we were able to all navigate through that. But week by week, we were able, and we committed to making decisions twice a week on how we were gonna use the cash, what we were gonna do with it. And we were forecasting out and then tr testing and trusting those forecasts and it worked really well. Those types of tools with that type of engagement is what's really critical. And next, we talked about saving costs earlier. We talked about looking at your business, figuring out, like, getting lean and mean, right, so to speak. But what you really wanna do is you also wanna make sure that you're not waiting too long to make decisions. You don't wanna just think things are gonna go up forever. You don't wanna to wait too long and say, I'll just extend one more week and one more week and one more week and you burn through 40, 50, 60 or more thousands of dollars of cash when that cash would have been so critical for you. You wanna be efficient and effective in making your decisions. Word to the wise, not making a decision, a yes or no, a binary choice, I'm gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it, is a decision. Those are the types of decisions, the lack of a decision, the indecision decision that I'm talking about, that actually lead the most to the issues that we see oftentimes. Someone just doesn't wanna make a choice, so they move it to next week, they move it to Monday, they move it to next month. I'm just gonna let one more month go by, one more month go by. Look, your gut has a feeling, that whole gut feeling thought process that you hear and you talk about and you know what I mean. When your gut gives you a feeling, especially if you've been in this business long enough, like most of you have, you have to trust it. And if your gut's telling you something's wrong, it's usually the time to act. That doesn't mean you just go overhaul and cut everything out, but you need to be paying a lot of attention on a daily basis to that gut feeling and making decisions off of it so that you don't get stuck. All right. That was some of the cash flow secrets that we've talked about and we see as you're leading into and trying to avoid a recession in your construction business. We hope you've taken some of these tools, some of this insight, some of this information, track it, figure it out in your own business. The most important thing you can do and the thing that would make me the happiest 
would be to take this information but implement it into your business. Don't just listen to it. Figure it out. Go back and hear this video. Grab the couple pieces that might actually work for you, might not, but grab the pieces that you know will and just tackle one at a time. Don't try to overhaul the whole thing. Don't hear me say something about bond markets or interest rates or what are those tactics, get frustrated and just be like, you know what, it's not for me. There's one nugget in here. Just take one nugget and implement it back into your business. Do the next one and the next one, and that's it. Those are things that are gonna help you. Talk to others. I hope this helped you. If it did, share some insights. I'd love to hear some of your stories in, your com in the comments section. Let us know how we can help. And in the meantime, have a great week, and God bless you.